Okay, in dealing with making homemade beeswax candles, I'm going to show you first off the items it takes to get started. So we're going to show different things of wax. This particular wax here, you can see it's small granules of yellow beeswax. And that's a four pound bag. You can also get it. I've got this big block here. It's a five pound block. And then one with the beeswax on it, there's one pound block. So the beeswax comes a variety of different ways based on what you want to pay for it. Then you've got to have a small tin. And the small tin sometimes will have a, a screen that allows you to filter out different things. But that's what you're going to be melting the beeswax in. And then I use a pair of welder's gloves just to keep things, because you have to pour it while it's hot. And you, you want to have gloves on because you never know what, what you're going to have to hang on to. The other item is going to be a your molds and a stand. Now, I built this stand. And I'm going to back up. There you go. So it, this stand holds five different molds. Right now, I'm just using three. The molds are silicone tubes. They are made for six inch colonial style tapers. And they have a hole in the bottom right there. And what you'll use to string those is you'll have a certain kind of wick based on the type of candle you're making. And you have a threaded piece here. This is called a needle, a wick needle. And it's a long one. You can see that it's almost two feet and it goes through a small hole here and brings your wicking out the top as you can see here's one that's already done and you can just see the, the wick on the inside and the wick will be brought out to the top to go along with that you've got to have some type of release and this is uh, a silicone mold release that you spray into that because you're using silicone for your base. Now, before you pour, you've got to be able to melt it down. I use a one burner stove. And then inside, you'll see this has a little bit of beeswax ready, ready to start. But I'll add another three or four ounces to that because it takes 1.88 ounces of wax per candle so you can calculate how many of those you can get out of a pot or how many how much wax you put in in order to measure that out so you know use i use a scale this particular one right here is an o house balance beam scale it tells me exactly what i'm measuring out and then to go along with it you use a thermometer that you drop into your pot here you want the temperature to between 135 and say 150 to pour. I normally keep it on the cooler side of around 135 to 140 and then that's when I'll pour. So this is the beginning and once we get these kind of set up you'll see that the wick on the bottom of these I've got a channel so we bring the channel out like this so that the wick it comes through and the mold stands up straight. Once you bring the wick out, let's see if I can bring that out. Oh, I have to do that here. When you bring the wick out like this, Pull it out enough that you can get back to it. And then there's a rod that you use, right? goes right here. You can see that the rod comes through the frame of the mold stand. And it'll go right across the top of the molds. It goes right into that little hole there. locks in place and you'll take this set it down there bring your 
wick around to the channel, get it set. And now you'll bring this top piece of wick over the top and you'll clamp it over that bar. So, and normally I'll use like an old time clothespin like that to hold it in place. Now before you do that, normally I set them down like that. I'll take the silicone spray and I'll spray right in. Be sure it goes all the way to the bottom. Once you've put it back into the stand, you'll hit it again all the way around. And then you'll hit it one more time just before you make a pour. That way it gives you a good release. On this, on this last one, I have threaded the wick through the uh, wick needle. You can see the needle runs into the mold itself. I'll stand it up, be sure that it's all the way to the bottom like that. And I don't know how to show that, except we'll put it down on the ground there. And you can see the needle come up through that, go all the way to the bottom, and then you'll just pull it through. And that, that way you get the length you need. Okay, now you can see that all three molds have been put, put in place. The wicks are coming out through the channel, and the wicks are clamped at the top. The top is actually the bottom of the candle. Now the next thing to do is come over and Turn this on to a low temperature. We'll watch the uh, thermometer, and when it gets to around 135 degrees, 140, we'll pour. Now, to add to that, I have poured up to the 12 ounce line. It's not 12 ounces, but the 12 ounce line, uh, the beeswax granules. So that gives me enough for uh, four candles. And I'm going to pour it in while this is heating. And that'll give us enough for a complete pour. Okay, this is just a little review of seeing how it's melted down. Again, don't want it to be too hot. So it takes its time. Because if it gets too hot, you burn the wax, it changes everything about it for the next burn. All right, we'll come back in a little bit. Okay, once the wax is completely melted and you've reached temperature, make sure you got your gloves on, ready to go. And I'll take the silicone and I'll hit each tube one more time, ready to pour. Take it up. And pour slow. Pour right behind the wick. Watch it come to the top. Stop it right at the edge. And then go to the next one. Okay, once it gets there, let it set, turn your heat down to warm, just to keep it warm. Each one, you can see it starting to settle. And you can see the bubbles rise in that one. So it's starting to congeal. As it does, it'll settle down below the, the lip of this. Come back again, we'll, we'll hit another, uh, just top off, and that'll, then we'll let it cool for about two hours.
Okay, once the candles have started to cool and the tops have all gelled, which you can see they are, then we just come in and take the clamps off. And then we'll pull the rod out from the wicks. And we can pull these out, set them on the side. Now these are still a little too warm. It's been about an hour for us to pop the uh, candles out. But we can take a look and see yeah, everything is good. And if you, when you see the little space around the top and the shrinkage of the top, that's perfect because it shows you that the candle itself has settled on its size and that it's not sticking to the mold. So that's a good thing. Okay, and then we'll come back. Okay, now we're going to try this. This is how they get these out of here. And sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not. First, go around and break the top of the mold away from the candle. Then grab this and give it a twist. And you can hear it breaking free from the candle down all down the length. And if that feels good, <clears throat> give it a try. We take a flat nose plier. Grab hold of the wick, grab the edges of the mold, and let's see, there it goes, and it just pulls out like that, pull it all the rest of the way, pull the wick out, just far enough where you can cut it, cut the bottom off, and you got it. This is a colonial style. Six inch candle. Done.